In this video, we'll be discussing about folic acid metabolism, also known as folate metabolism. You know, this folic acid or folate is also known as vitamin B9 or folacin. If we see where the absorption takes place, the folate is absorbed in the duodenum and jejunum, the initial part of the small intestine. And there are two important enzymes in this metabolism. First one is the tyroyl polyglutamate hydrolase enzyme also known as folate conjugase which is present in the jejunal mucosa and second enzyme is the dihydrofolate reductase which is found to be in the liver now moving towards the dietary folic acid forms the food we consume has got two important forms of folic acid one is the polyglutamate folate and second one is the monoglutamate folate the monoglutamate folate shows direct absorption that means it's directly absorbed by the small intestine and then gets into the liver. Whereas the polyglutamate form or polyglutamate folic acid is first converted into monoglutamate form in the jejunum and then this monoglutamate is absorbed and finally reaches the liver. Now let's see the whole mechanism or metabolism in detail. We see here in this diagram we have the stomach followed by duodenum and jejunum, the parts of the small intestine. First of all, from the duodenum and jejunum, we get the monoglutamyl folate, which is directly absorbed and gets into the liver. Then from duodenum and jejunum, we also get the polyglutamyl folate or polyglutamyl folic acid. And we know that it's not directly absorbed, so it needs conversion first. So here in the jejunal mucosa of small intestine, it's first acted upon by tyroyl polyglutamate hydrolase and gets converted into monoglutamyl folate and then this also gets into the liver so now we see in the liver we have the monoglutamyl folate as shown in the diagram here it is acted upon by dhfr that's dihydrofolate reductase this enzyme reduces monoglutamyl folate to dihydrofolate using nadph as an electron donor and in the next step, this dihydrofolate is again acted upon by DHFR, that is dihydrofolate reductase, which reduces this dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate using NADPH as an electron donor also. Now from here, this THF or tetrahydrofolate is converted into 510-methylene tetrahydrofolate, where one carbon unit is accepted by THF from serine, as shown in the diagram. And this reaction is catalyzed by serine hydroxymethyl transferase enzyme, SHMT. And we see when the serine gives off its one carbon, it's converted into glycine. Now this 510-methylene THF is acted upon by MTHFR enzyme and gets converted into 5-methyl THF. And it must be noted here, these reactions are also taking place within the liver cells. Then 5-methyl THF or 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate combines with homocysteine in presence of methionine synthase. And from this reaction we get the tetrahydrofolate and methionine. The methionine gets into the cyclic reactions forming as the SAM then followed by SAH and finally we get the homocysteine back. So this forms as the methionine cycle. And on the left wire we get the THF back or tetrahydrofolate back forms as the folate regeneration pathway. Now we see 5-methyl THF or 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate can also lead into purine synthesis. And on the other side this 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate or THF can also drive into the formation of dihydrofolate back when it is acted upon by thymidylate synthase in presence of DUMP. This DUMP gets converted into DTMP as shown in the diagram. And we know this DTMP can lead into the DNA synthesis. So we see we are getting two important things from folate metabolism or folic acid metabolism. DNA synthesis and purine synthesis. So this is all about folic acid metabolism. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.